Hey guys. Hey guys, welcome to episode 4 and today we're going to create an Android application or game based on the Stroop effect. Here is the final result. As you can see, at the top we have a score that's being counted for every correct answer. Next, we have a word which represents a colour and the colour of this word as well as the actual word is constantly changing. Next, we have some buttons which represent colours and the user has to choose the colour they see and not the colour that they read. So according to Wikipedia, the Stroop effect is named after a John Ridley Stroop who first recorded the effect in English in 1935 but it was previously published by some German authors um, in 1929. The Stroop effect describes a delay in the reaction time between congruent and incongruent stimuli and congruent stimuli, an example would be the colour red and the word red together. Incongruent would be the colour blue and the word red. It is said that if stimuli are congruent, it is easier to identify them correctly. And if they are incongruent, then it is much harder and more prone to errors. And with that simple explanation, let's just jump straight into building the Android application. So the first thing we're going to do is to start a Android Studio project. We can choose empty activity, application, stroop effect, um, Android, everything seems okay. We'll do it in Java just to make things easier. And let's press finish. So let's go straight to our design. So this is what we have so far. So now that we're here, let's quickly cut away and discuss our design approach. Okay, so please forgive my handwriting and drawing skills. The idea of the game is that you choose the colour that you see and not read, which will probably make it a lot easier for children who cannot read. So this is how the application will be laid out. We'll have the score at the top, then the incongruent stimulus, which will be the name of the colour, which will be different to the actual colour. So for example, Red will be stated, but the actual colour will be blue or yellow or orange, etc. Then we'll have some buttons which will represent colours. And the idea is that the user chooses the colour that they see. So here the user would choose blue, not red. Our design will be very simple. We'll have text used representing the text and buttons for the colours. So let's go. Okay, so now that we've done that, let's start. So the first thing we want to do, let's just use this what's already here, constraint layout relative layouts so let's just do that first relative layouts and legacy now this is not gonna let me put it outside of here so I'm gonna go over to the XML so I'm gonna change this to relative layout yeah let's go back to design so there's a hello world which is fine so for our text view let's give it an ID of score text view and its actual value will be score boom and let's make it a bit bigger nice so that's our score and because it's already all the way in the corner let's increase the margin so let's go over to split mode let's add margin and let's just say 10 dp that's a lot better. So there we have our score. Next is the word, the color. So let's go back to design. Let's add another text view. I'm gonna call it color text view. We're going to give it, let's give it a default color of, let's just call it color, why not? I wanna say that we want this to be underneath our score. So let's go back to split. And for our text view, so right now they're not in the same relative layout, so let's put them inside of relative layout. So to do this, I can either come over here, I can get these and drag it inside here, like so, or I could just edit it the XML. So we want our color to be underneath our score, so we want to say layout below, uh, below, um, score text view. There we go, it's underneath now. And let's make this center, center horizontal, true, there we go, 
Let's make it bigger. Um, text size. Ah. Um, 48 SP. And let's also increase the margin. Let's just say 30 DP. The margin button right now. So next, we're going to add some image buttons. So before we do that, we're going to add some colors to the resource folder. Located res values colors. And let's add all our colors that we're going to use. I've added the colors. And now that we've added them to the colors resource file, we can now use them over in the design. So image button, drag it in. Uh, let's just choose this for now. And we'll change it after. So let's change it, get color. And then we'll we can choose one of our colors. So let's choose color red for the first button. So to see the button, this is our red layout. But right now it covers the entire screen. So we want to make it wrap content instead. There we go. And let's place our buttons underneath here in a new resive layout. So resive layout. Then it's gonna put it inside. Let's just do that. Call this score and color relative layer and call this one color buttons relative layer that's fine let's place our button inside this relative layer and make sure this relative layer is underneath this one so let's go back over to split and this needs to be below there we go so now our button is still too small so let's go back over here make our draw background our color red wait from the height let's make it 100 dp there we go let's give it a margin 20 dp and let's call this red color button now that we've done that for one button we can do the same for the other buttons so we can just copy this and do the other button and let's make it to the right so right of red button there you go. actually because this button is so similar looking to this one let's make this one the blue button so now that we have the top row done let's do the second row i decided to change the color from black to yellow just to make it look a bit more better so now that we have the score and the color it's a lot of space here so let's wrap these buttons inside a relative layout and then center the relative layout vertically so there we go that seems a bit better now but with this color can be made a bit bigger too big oh yes yeah, nice. there we go so now that we've finished the design let's go straight to the code so now that we're here i'm going to make this a bit bigger and then i'm going to add two array lists one which will hold all the color names and one which will hold all the color values one is of type string for the color names and one is of type integer to hold the color values then i'm going to write a method called populate array list which will add all the color names to these lists and all the color values so this is the method it adds all the color names and adds all the colors which we added to our colors resource file so next run this application and see what we have so far so this is what we have so far we have a score a color and some image buttons so now the next thing to do is to generate a random color here and also change the color here as well so let's move on to that so i've created a random variable but first i'm going to make references to my views so for each button i'm going to link this up in the code as well as the text views so i've defined my text views and image buttons as fields time to link them up so now that i've set up references to the views I've just got to call this method. So let's do that. Perfect. It's called populate array method, array list methods as well. So this is how we get a random color. We use the random variable to generate a random number. We then get a random word from the, our color names array list, such as red or orange. We then set our text view to be that word. 
and then we do the same thing for the actual color this time and then we set the color of that text view to be that random color value so let's call this method and test that it works so we have purple and the color is green green and yellow orange and orange and so on so now attach action so when we press this button the score will increase if we get it right so we're going to create a generic on click for the image buttons so and then we're going to initialize this in our setup views we're going to call it setup views and listeners So when this button is clicked, we're going to get the background color of the image button. And if this is equal to the color of the color text view, then we increase the score. So what I've done, when an image button is clicked, you get the background, you find the color of the background, and you check whether the color that you found is equal to the color of the color text view. If that's so, you increase the score and you adjust the score text. So now all you have to do is attach these image button, this image button listener to all our image buttons. So let's do that now. Okay, now that I've done that, let's test it and see whether it works. So, yellow, that's right. Score one. Yellow again. Ah, I'm not constantly calling the get random color method. So let's do that quickly. So every time the score increases, I want to change the color. So orange, that's correct. Orange, that's not correct it's green so i click green blue that's correct orange again ah orange red green, yellow red orange green yeah so what we can do is maybe set up some kind of game over if you get something wrong and say hey you got so and so so let's do that but first i want to add a bit more randomness to the array list so let's come down here and before i get the random color let's shuffle the array list and let's test whether we get a bit more randomness purple yellow blue ah orange yellow red seems a bit more random now i think anyway yeah okay so now that we've done that maybe i should have given it a c but i think it's fine to be honest so this is the base game we have it randomly generating a color and then actually changing the color as well and it increases the score every time we get it correct as well so now let's try and add a game over screen when you get it wrong and then it should restart reset the score as well okay so to create the game over screen we're going to create a dialogue right click new driver class um let's call it game over dialogue let's make it extend um, dialogue with our create constructor that's what we need so first let's create our view that our dialogue is going to show Give it a relative layer across the root. Okay, now that we have this, simply want a text view, which will be the score text view. Next, and we also want a button, which will be the restart button. Now, this will be uh, 72. Right there we go. Let's make it centered. Give it a margin. You should store your strings in a string resource file, but we'll just store it here to make it easier. Text alignment center. Let's get our button sorted out. Center it as well. Let's make it big.
So this is our final view, nice and simple. So we've got the final score and then the option to restart. I've added a text view and I've added a button. And then I've just done, added a margin around the button, centered the button around the text view and aligned the button underneath the text view. So now over here in our game over dialogue, in the on create method, we're going to create a reference to the view. We don't want a title, so we're going to just say window dot no feature. I'm going to set content view, so basically what is shown inside the dialog and that will be our layout we just created. Write a method that we did before, set views and listeners. Button, use that button. This was previously a score text view, but because the other view shared score text view, I changed it to dialogue score text view. And then I'm just gonna add a on-click listener for our button. You know, when it's clicked, it should basically reset. So when I want to say dismiss for now, so we're gonna store a reference to our context. And this will allow us to have access to the things inside our main activity. Let's call this, let's set this in. If the color that the user presses is correct, increase the score, else it's game over. So we want to create a dialogue. So new game over dialogue. Context will be this. Ah, this in this context is the object lesson. So you want to say main activity like this. And let's test that works. So purple. Purple. Ah, it's not showing because I didn't actually say show. Honestly, time to so let's do game over dialogue. And then dot show. There we go. So that's got cancelable. Set cancel. There we go. Folks. That means we can't dismiss it and continue with the game. So now, so there we go, final score zero. We haven't set this yet, and that should for now dismiss it, but ideally it should restart the game. So let's make it work. So now when we create this, we need to use our context. Inside our main activity, we're gonna create a method which allows us to set the score. So I created a method called reset game. This sets the score to zero, resets the score that we see, and also pause get random color again so it simulates the game restarting again resetting itself so i want to call this method from my dialogue i also want to access the score text view so i'm going to create a that should be public sorry not private and i want to create a method which allows me to get the score i'm going to return a string there we go so now over here, when I do this, I want to use the context that I passed in. So with my context, I'm going to cast it to my main activity class. Now that I've done this, I can access methods of the main activity class. So I can get my score. Um, so here, I want to copy this, sorry. My dialog score text view set text will be this and then when I press the restart button I want to call reset game there we go. so reset game I just realized that the set text needs to be the score plus the score and we also need to when we initially set up the references this score view should equal Dot set text, sorry, should be score again. Plus score. Just make it a bit more consistent. So, perfect, score is now zero. Green, so let's do it correct. So, it should be blue, sorry. There we go. Purple, red, sorry. So let's try something that's incorrect. Let's try green. So perfect, so score has been carried over. 
let's press restart perfect it's being reset so let's try orange sorry blue there we go and just like that guys it made a very simple game I'm just going to take you through all the classes again we first started with creating a view we gave it some text views some image buttons and we gave them their own individual colors we also added our colors to our colors xml file so we can use them and access them dialogue game over we created a text view and a button for this so that's all our views in our main activity we create two array lists one for the color names, one for the color values. We create a random value. We then store references to our text views and image button, which are part of the design. We create a on-click listener, which can be used for all the buttons. And we create a score. So we set up our views and listeners. So references to the score view. We set the initial text to be score plus the actual score. Image buttons, on-click listener. If our on-click listener, we get the background color of the button as a color drawable we cast it to a color drawable we then get the color and then we compare our color of our button which we clicked to the actual color of the word if it's correct then we increase our score and set the text as the increased score and then we generate an, the next random color and word if we're incorrect then we show the game over dialogue we set it to cancelable which means that we cannot press outside of the dialogue and then continue with the game and then we show our dialogue we then set the on click listener so we're saying for each image button this on click listener should be the same for all of them we populate our array list with the colors our six colors and then we get our colors from our colors file and then we store it in our color values array list. Then we call the get random color method. We added shuffles for a bit more randomness. So we get a random color from our color names array list. Let's say we get the color red or purple. Then we get an actual color value. So green or yellow. Then we set the text to be the our random color we chose and the actual color of our word to be color value that we chose. And um, we have a reset game method. So when we press the dismiss button of the dialogue, it sets the score back to zero updates the actual text that we see and then basically calls the next random color again and this get score just allows us to access the score text view from the dialogue in our dialogue we've just got a constructor in which we save the content we set our content view to be the view that we created and then we call set up views and listeners this creates a reference to the restart button and the dialogue score text view and then it sets the score text view to be whatever the score is of the main activity then when we press the restart button it calls reset game and then dismisses the dialogue and that's as simple as it is guys hope you guys learned something and you saw a quick insight into android development but this has just been a nice and quick way to create a game based on the strip effect hope you guys enjoyed and part two of this will be the same game but for iOS and stuff. So look forward to the next video. Thanks guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode and learned something. And part two will be coming in which we build the iOS equivalent of this application. So like and subscribe for more. See you.